welcome back to Singapore Symphony Orchestra's Musical Sound Bites, Enigma Variations, Episode 2. It's conductor Jessica here, ready to adventure into our next four sound bites from Elgar's Enigma Variations, while we discover all about the next section of the orchestra, the woodwinds. Now, if you joined me last week for the string section, You'll know that we did some great drawings and colouring in and made a special musical map of the stage while we listened to the music. So feel free to join in with me again today as I draw, colour and map. Or you can just find a comfortable spot at home, close your eyes and simply listen to the music as it plays. Before we hear any of the Singapore Symphony Orchestra's beautiful playing today, we need to learn a little bit more about the Woodwind family. Elgar wrote his Enigma Variations for nine woodwind players. He chose two flutes, one which also plays the little piccolo, two oboes, two clarinets, two bassoons and one big contrabassoon. These players usually sit in a line or two behind the string, so they're right in the middle of the orchestra. We'll add them to our stage map a little bit later. Do you know the funny thing about the name woodwind is that not all woodwind instruments are actually made of wood these days. They used to be many years ago, but now some are made from wood, some from metal or plastic, or a combination. The woodwind instruments have a narrow cylinder shape, a little bit like a pipe or a tunnel, and they have a mouthpiece at the top and then an opening at the end. They have holes along the cylinder, sometimes with metal keys on top. These holes allow the musicians to change the pitch by opening or closing them as they blow air through the mouthpiece and down through the cylinder. Now, I know sometimes these instruments are a little bit hard to picture, so I've asked my good friend Sam to come along today and show us some of these woodwind instruments so we can see them up close. Hi Sam, welcome to Musical Soundbite. Thank you, hi everyone. Now, Sam is so talented that not only does he play one woodwind instrument, he plays them all, so he's brought them all in to show us. We're gonna start off with the flute. Let's have a look at your flute here, Sam. Now, what's that made from? This is made of metal. Metal, good, and it's got the nice, this is the bit that we talked about with the mouthpiece up here. Is it a little bit like blowing across a bottle? Exactly like blowing across a bottle. Yeah. Exactly, let's see what the flute sounds like. You can see when Sam moved his fingers there, that altered the pitch and changed the notes. Now, this has got a little baby sister to this instrument, which is the piccolo, which we also hear in, in the Elgar uh, Enigma variations. Piccolo is played a little bit as well, and it's going to sound higher because it's a lot shorter. Let's have a listen. Wow, if you sit right next to the piccolo in the orchestra, you can get uh, pretty deaf and pretty quickly because it can play very high and very, very loud. Do you know what's about the top note you can get up to there? Oh, you can hit the top C at the top of a piano. Wow. But really we don't need high. to hear that right now. No, <laughs> we'll save us from that. So after the flute and the piccolo, we move on to one of your favorite instruments, which is the oboe. Now the oboe has a very special job in the orchestra as well, because it usually is the instrument that plays the A at the beginning uh, of the rehearsal or the concert, so the orchestra can tune to it. Why, why is that? Oboe has such a unique sound that it is able to sort of cut through everything else. So when the oboe is playing the A, everyone in the orchestra can still hear it to tune. Yeah, mm. wow, that's really great. Sam, you're holding something in your hand. Can you tell us what that is? Yep, this is a reed, and it's two pieces of cane wrapped together tightly, and they vibrate together to create the sound. And can we hear what that would sound like before you stick it in the oboe? Uh -huh. Oh, what an interesting sound. <laughs> it sounds quite different when we attach it here, though. So you can see it's a little bit like the flute, but this time Sam's holding it straight out. We've still got the, the keys here, which are going to change the different pitch, and Sam's going to blow down this double reed and we'll hear the sound. Let's have a listen to the oboe. It's a very beautiful legato sound, isn't it? It's absolutely gorgeous. After the oboe, we move on to another one of our friends, the clarinet. 
Sam's bought his clarinet. Sam, this looks a little bit like the oboe. It looks pretty similar. Mm -hmm. What's different about up here though? Well, the clarinet is wider and longer, but it's also got a single reed. So it's one piece of cane that you strap onto the mouthpiece that you blow through rather than the double reeds that the oboe has. Okay. So you've got lots of different reeds that you use? Lots of different lots reeds. Lots of different reeds, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Good, so he's going to tighten it up here. Mm -hmm. so what, it's strapped on. what would happen um, if you if you didn't play with the reed? Would the instrument make any noise? No sound at all, just air. <laughs> just air. Right, <laughs> let's hear the clarinet. <laughs> really beautiful. I do love the sounds of the clarinet. Mm. And are there different types of clarinets? There are. There's a whole family. There's a little E-flat clarinet, which is like the piccolo version of the clarinet, <laughs> all the way down to bass and contrabass that can go right down to the low notes of the piano as well. Wow. So you can get a really big range. Wonderful. Um, we're up to our last of the woodwind. Wait till you see this one. This is Sam's bassoon. Whoa, there you go. <laughs> now remember in this piece we also have a contra bassoon. Mm -hmm. Now having a look at this, this does look quite different to the others. Mm -hmm. um, we have, this is a really interesting part of the bassoon. The crook, can you tell us about that? Yeah, the crook's just a really small piece of metal. That's where the reed sits on. Mm -hmm. And it has the same kind of reed as an oboe. So we've got the two pieces of cane strapped together. It's a mm. double reed. Yeah. Wow, great. And so look how big these keys are. So you've got right hand here. Does it feel quite heavy to play the bassoon? Uh, thankfully no, because there's a little seat strap we use that holds all the weight. So it oh. just sits here next to us. Yeah. Oh, that's good. It does look <laughs> a lot bigger. Um, do you think that you could maybe play us something from the Elgar just so we can get a little bit of an idea of what it would sound like? Mm -hmm. If you had to pick one of your favourite woodwind instruments, which one do you think it would be? Oh, I love them all, but I think my favourites would have to be a toss-up between oboe and bassoon for double reeds. Ah, we might keep yeah. that in mind later because <laughs> we might draw one of your favourites, I think, while we're listening. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. I've learned so much about the woodwind today. Very big thanks to Sam for coming in and showing us the woodwind instruments. Thanks so much for having me. We are going to hear all of these woodwind instruments play in the next movement from Elgar's Enigma Variations. Now this one is fast and fiery, but it features the whole orchestra playing very energetically, which is exactly what Elgar wants us to hear. He dedicated this variation to William Meath Baker, who was a squire of Hasfield in Gloucestershire, who apparently expressed himself very energetically too. Now, it's only a very short burst of music. In fact, it's the shortest of all the variations. I thought I would have a go and see if I could draw a flute while I listen. Do you want to join me? I hope you enjoyed that fun variation. The next one that Elgar wrote was dedicated to Richard, the son of a poet. I really love this variation because it has two very different characters in the music. It starts very serious and a little bit sad with a string section playing down low with long largamento and sostenuto bows, which means broadly and sustained. How do you think you'd play? broadly and sustained on an instrument. It almost looks like we are bowing in slow motion. Then suddenly in the seventh bar of music, the mood suddenly changes and we hear our woodwind introduce us to quite a different character. At one point, 
I think it sounds like the flutes, oboes and bassoons are almost having a playful little giggle as they sing ha 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 ha. Then the clarinet plays a long singing line which brings us back again to our sad string melody. The music then does this same pattern again. So I thought we could show this special pattern by colouring in the sound patterns as we listen together. When you hear the serious verse theme, we'll use dark colours and long strokes. And when the music changes, we'll change character too and use lots of short dots in bright colours to match the sound. Are you ready? In the next variation, we see that the woodwind work together with the string section this time, accompanying a beautiful viola solo. Elgar actually wrote this variation for one of his viola students called Isabel. After the viola plays the first three notes, see if you can hear the bassoons sing out a little answer. It sounds a little bit like they're having a musical conversation, saying to each other, here I am, hello there. How are you? Very good. Shall we listen to this movement now and see if you can draw a bassoon? This one's a bit of a tricky one, but one of the things that will tell us that it's a bassoon is something called a crook. A crook is a curved piece of metal that sticks out from the main body of the bassoon all the way to the reed, which is the part that goes into your mouth. I sometimes think it looks a little bit like a gooseneck. Let's see if you can add that to your drawing of a bassoon. I wonder if any of you play a woodwind instrument. Can you play?
play lots of fast scales, lots of notes that go from quiet to loud. Well, our final variation for today asks our woodwind section to do just that. It's marked in the musical score for the musicians to play presto, which means it goes by super fast. Elgar wrote this one for one of his best friends, who was an architect called Arthur. The music changes from a very soft piano dynamic to a loud forte dynamic many times. I think these quick changes make it sound like the music has a little bit of a temper. Do you remember last week when we started off our musical orchestra map? Well, let's add the woodwind section to our map this time. They're going to sit straight behind our strings. Oh, and you better hold on tight. The timpani is about to start us off. listening to this music today. I hope that you did too. In fact, I found that last variation so exciting, I had lots of different storylines and ideas bouncing around in my head while the music played. I wonder if you did too. Well, if you did, that reminds me that I need to tell you about SSO's Enigma Variations Short Story Contest. SSO would love to see your short stories, no more than 200 words, based on the excerpt that we just heard played then. It's from Elgar's Enigma Variations and it's variation number seven called Troit. You can submit your short stories to outreach at sso.org.sg anytime before the 11th of April. I hear they're going to be giving out a prize for the best story written, so good luck. I'm looking forward to exploring another four sound bites with you next Sunday at 3pm. Until then, I'll see you next week.